Getting loans or credit transaction to start a business or scale up your working capital or simply expand. Well, it depends on your capacity to pay, credit history, and of course, most importantly, collateral or security. Let's face it, getting loans without real estate collateral is mostly declined by banks and other financial institutions. You could use your personal property like jewels, cars, or other such valuables, but at best, it can only be pawned, which is not practical and can have huge or piling interest. And most often in times, it is under a take it or leave it desperate contracts. It is like going through the iPhone needle, especially if you're just new and does not have that much credit history. That's where PPSA law or Personal Security Act comes in. This law was enacted to level the playing field for SMEs, micro, small to medium enterprise, especially for capitalization or capital expenditures. It gives such MSMEs and other entrepreneurs that access to credit facilities and secured by specific law. What's best about it is that it can be done online and accessible to everyone. Before, it was Article 2140, or by the Shuttle Mortgage. Personal property is recorded in the Shuttle Mortgage Registry as a security for the performance of obligation. If the movable instead of being recorded is delivered to the creditor, or third person, the contract is pledged in the Shuttle Mortgage. Ari 11.057, or the PPCA Law, began July 24, 2017. It is an act strengthening the secure transaction legal framework in the Philippines, which shall provide for the creation, perfection, termination of priority, establishment of centralized notice, Registry, it will be listed online. Enforcement of security interest in a personal property and for other purposes. Section 1. This act shall be known as the Personal Property Security Act. Section 2. It is the policy of the state to promote economic activity by increasing access to least cost credit, particularly for micro, small, and medium enterprises, by establishing a unified and modern legal framework for securing obligations with personal property. Section 66. Repealing Clause The following laws and all laws, decrees, or orders, and issuance of portions thereof, which are inconsistent with the provisions of this Act, are hereby repealed, amended, or modified accordingly. First is the Section 1 to Section 16 of Act 1508, otherwise known as the Chattel Mortgage Law. Second, Article 20. 2085 to 2123 on provisions of pledges, mortgages, and anticrisis. Also, 2127, 2140 to 2141 to 2143. These are provisions on shuttle mortgages. And 2246 to 2247, which are provisions of order of preferences of credits of RA 306, also known as the Civil Code of the Philippines. Third, Section 13 of RA 5880, as amended by RA 8556 also known as the Financing Company Act of 1998, in which Registry of Financial Leases Fourth, Section 114 L. Leases Fourth, 1529 On Property Registration Decree Fifth, Section 10 of E.D. 1529 The Registry of Deeds on Personal Property And Sixth, Section 5 E. Encumbrances of Motor Vehicles of R.A. 4136 Also known as the Land Transportation and Traffic Code Section 60 Congressional Oversight Committee shall be created that will conduct a periodic review Every five years, commencing from the effectivity of this act, the Congressional Oversight Committee shall be composed of chairpersons of Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies, the chairperson of the Representative Committee of Banks and Financial Intermediaries, and representatives of other relevant Congressional Committees. Section 61. Interpretations. If there are conflict between the provision of this act and the provisions of any other law, this act shall govern unless the other law specifically cites or amends the conflicting provisions of this law. Section 62. Implementing rules and regulations. Within six Six months from the passage of this act, the DOF in coordination with DOJ through LRA shall promulgate the necessary rules and regulations for the effectivity implementation of this act. Section 67. Effectivity. This act shall take effect 15 days after publication in at least two newspapers of general circulation. Section 68. Implementation. Notwithstanding the entry into force of this act under Section 67, the implementation of this act shall be conditioned upon the registry being established and operational. Please note that the registry is already established and operational. However, there are still some issues regarding the implementations of such registry. Section 65. Separability clause. Should any provisions herein be declared unconstitutional, the same shall not affect the validity of other provisions of this act. Scope of PPSA. Under Section 4. This act shall affect all transactions of any format that secure an obligation with movable collateral, except interest in aircraft subject to RA number 9497 for the Civil Aviation Authority Act of 2008 and in ships subject to PD number 1521 for the Ship Mortgage Decree of 1978. So, this act only pertains to landcrafts. Security and Interest under Section 3. Definition of Terms Security Interest 
property right in collateral, the secures payment of another performance of an obligation regardless of whether the parties have denominated it as a security interest. And regardless of the type of asset, the status of the grantor, a secured creditor, or the nature of the secured obligation, including the right of a buyer, accounts, receivable, and lessors under an operating lease for not less than one year. Grantor Persons who grants a security interest in collateral to secure its own obligation or that of another person. A buyer or other transferee of collateral that acquires its right subject to security interest. Transferor in an outright transfer of an accounts receivable or a lessee of goods. Secured creditor. A person that has secured interest for the purpose of registration and priority only. It includes a buyer of account receivable in a lesser of goods under an operating lease for not less than one year. Proceeds. Any property received upon sale, lease, or other disposition of collateral or whatever is collected on or distributed with respect to collateral. Claims arising out of loss or damage to the collateral as well as right to insurance of payment or other compensation for loss of damage. Article 2126 of the Civil Code The mortgage directly and immediately subjects the property upon which it is imposed, whoever the possessor may be, to the fulfillment of obligation for whose security it was constituted. Creation under Section 5 Creation of security interest a Security interest shall be created by security agreement. A security agreement may be provided for the creation of a security interest in a future property, but a security interest in that property is created only when the grantor acquires right in it or the power to encumber it. The object of PPSA law under Sections 4, 5, and Civil Code Article 416 and 4. Section 4. Scope of the Act. This Act shall apply to all transactions of any form that secured an obligation with movable collaterals except interest in aircrafts subject to RA 9497 or the Civil Aviation Authority Act of 2008 and interest in ships subject to PD 1521 or the Ship Mortgage Degree of 1979. Below is the pictures of deposits accounts, receivables, checks, negotiable instruments, shares of stocks, store inventory, equipment, livestock, motor vehicles, and intellectual property rights among others which I got from LRA website which we'll see on the next video on how to register property or PPSR on LRA. Of course, we can also base such on civil code particularly. Article 416 The following things are deemed to be personal property. 1. Those movables susceptible of appropriations which are not included in the preceding article. Number 2. Their property which by any special provisions of law is considered as personal. Number 3. Forces of nature which are brought under control by science. And 4. In general, all things which can be transported from place to place without impairment of the real property which they are fixed. Article 417 The following are considered personal property. Number 1. Obligations and actions which have their own object movables and demandable sum. 2. Shares of stock of agricultural, commercial, and industrial entities, although they may have real estate. Forms as in Section 6. Section 6. Security Agreement A security agreement may be contained in written contracts signed by parties. It may consist of one or more writings that, taken together, establish the intent of the parties to create a security interest. Security agreement shall likewise provide for the language to be used in agreement and notices. The grantor shall be given the option to have agreement and notices in Filipino. DOF for the Department of Finance shall prepare model agreements in plain English and Filipino. Section 3. Definition of Terms Writing for the purpose of this act includes electronic records. Section 7. Description of collateral. A description of collateral shall be considered sufficient whether it is specific or general if it reasonably identifies the collateral. A description such as all personal property, all equipment, all inventory, or all personal property within the general category of the grantor shall be sufficient. The asset specific rules and accounts receivable under Section 10. Section 10 on contractual limitations on the creation of security interest. A. A security interest in account receivable shall be effective notwithstanding any agreement between the grantor and the account debtor of any secured creditor limiting in any way the grantor's right to create a security interest. Letter B. Nothing in this section shall affect any obligations of liability of the grantor for breach of the agreement in subsection A. C. Any stipulation limiting the grantor's right to create a security interest shall be void. D. This section shall apply only to accounts receivable arising from 1. A contract for the supply or lease of goods or services other than financial services. 2. A construction contract or a contract for the sale or lease of a real property. And 3. A contract for the sale, lease, or license of intellectual property. Disclosure of information by secured creditors under Section 37. Section 37. Disclosure of information. A. Secured creditor must provide the grantor at its request. 1. Current amount of the unpaid secured obligation. And 2. A list of assets currently under subject to the security interest. The secured creditor may require payment of a fee for each request made by the grantor in subsections A in this section, but the grantor is entitled to reply without charge once every 6 months. A security interest in a deposit account shall not 1. Affect the rights of obligation of the deposit taking institution without its consent or require the deposit taking institution to provide any information about the deposit account to third parties. Perfection under section 11. 
A security interest shall be perfected when it has been created and the secured creditor has taken one of the actions in an accordance with Section 12. On, perfection of a security interest becomes effective against third parties. Section 25. Fixtures, accessions, and commingled goods of perfected security interest in a movable property which has become a fixture or has undergone accession or commingling shall continue provided that the movable property involved can still be reasonably traced. In determining ownership over the fixtures, accessions, and commingled goods, the provisions of Book 2 of R.A. 386 or the Civil Code of the Philippines shall apply. Section 12. Means of Perfection A security interest may be perfected by registration of a notice with the registry, possession of a collateral by the secured creditor, and control of investment of property on deposit accounts. A security interest in a tangible asset may be perfected by registration of possession. A security interest in investment property and deposit account may be perfected by registration of control. Section 15. Change in Means of Perfection A security interest shall remain perfected despite a change in in the means for achieving perfection, provided that there was no time when the security interest was not perfected. Article 2125 of the Civil Code, in addition to the requisites stated in Article 2085, it is indispensable in order that a mortgage may be validly constituted that the document in which appears to be recorded in the registry of property, if the instrument is not recorded, the mortgage is nevertheless binding between the parties. The person in whose paper the law establish a mortgage have no other right than to demand the execution of the recording of the document in which the mortgage is formalized. Section 13. Perfection of control. A security interest of deposit of account in presence of property may be perfected by control through the creation of the security interest in favor of deposit taking institution or the intermediaries. 2. The conclusion of a control agreement or 3. For investment that is an electronic security not held within an intermediary, the notation of the security interest in the books maintained by or on behalf of the issuer for the purpose of recording the name of the holder of the security. Nothing in this act shall require deposit taking institution or an intermediary to enter into control agreement even if the grantor shall require. A deposit-taking institution or intermediary that has entered into such agreement shall not be required to confirm the existence of agreement to another person unless requested to do so by the grantor. Section 3. Definition of Terms with respect to the security means and agreements in writing among the issuer or the intermediary, the grantor and the secured creditor, according to which the issuer or the intermediary agrees to follow the instructions from the secured creditor with respect to the security without further consent from the grantor. With respect to the rights to the deposit account means and agreement in writing among the deposit taking institution, the grantor and secured creditor according to which the deposit-taking institution agrees to follow instructions from the secured creditor with respect to the payment of funds credited to the deposit account without further consent from the grantor. With respect to the commodity contracts, means and agreements in writing among the grantor, secured creditor, intermediary, according to which the commodity intermediary will apply any value distributed on account of the commodity contract as directed by the secured creditor without further consent by the commodity contract or grantor. Disposition of perfected security interest. Section 9. Continuity of security interest. A security interest shall continue in collateral notwithstanding sale, lease, license, exchange, or other dispositions of the collateral, except as otherwise provided in Section 21 of this Act or agreed upon the parties. Section 21. Transfer exceptions. Any party who obtains in the ordinary course of business any movable party containing a security interest shall take the same free of such security interest provided he was in good faith no such good faith shall exist if the security interest in the movable property was registered prior to his obtaining the property. Section 14. Perfection of Proceeds A. Upon disposition of collateral, a security interest shall extend to the proceeds to collateral without further act and be continuedly perfected. If the proceeds are in the form of money, accounts, receivable, negotiable instruments, or deposit accounts. There B. Upon disposition of the collateral, if the proceeds are in form different from money, accounts, receivable, negotiable instruments, or deposit accounts, the security interest in such proceeds must be perfected by one of the means applicable to the relevant type of collateral within 15 days after the grantor receives such proceeds. Otherwise, the security interest in such proceeds shall not be effective against third parties. Section 3. Definition of Terms Proceeds Any party received upon sale, lease, or other disposition of collateral, or whatever is collected on or distributed with respect to collateral, claims arising out of the loss or damage to the collateral, as well as the right to insurance payment or other compensation for loss or damage of the collateral. Assignment of Interest Section 16 If a secured creditor assigns a perfected security interest, an amendment notice may be registered to reflect the assignment. Registry Please note that there will be a second video showing how to register personal properties allowed under PPSA online. Section 26 Establishment of Electronic Registry A. The registry shall be established and administered by the LRA. B. 
The registry shall provide electronic means for registration and searching of notices. Section 64. Sourcing of the funds. Funds needed for the implementation of this act shall be taken from the special account arising from revenues collected by the LRA under Section 111 of PD 1529 without any further government approval. Section 38. Fees set by regulation. A. The fees for registering a notice and for requesting a certified search for a report shall be set by regulation issued by the Department of Finance for the recovery of a reasonable cost of establishing and operating the registry. B. The fees structured or any changes thereof under subsection A shall further consider that the same shall not be burdensome to either lender or grantor. C. There shall be no need for electronic searches of the registry records or for the registration of termination of notice. And lastly, B. The registry may charge fees for services not mentioned above. Under Section 27, it is a public record. Any information contained in a registered notice shall be considered as public record. Any person may search notices registered in the registry, and the rec electronic record of the registry shall be official records. Under Section 35, it is the registered notice for each registered notice. The registry shall assign a unique registration number, create a record that bears a number assigned to the initial notice and the date of time of registration, and maintain the record of public inspection. The registry shall index notices by identification number, the grantor, and for notices containing a serial number of a motor vehicle or Brazilian number. The registry shall provide a copy of the electronic record of the notice, including the registration number and the date and time of registration to the person who submitted it. The registry shall maintain the capability to retrieve a record by the identification number of the grantor and by serial number of the motor vehicle. The registry shall maintain records of lapsed notices for a period of 10 years after the lapse. The duties of the registry shall merely administrative in nature by registering a notice or refusing to register a notice. The registry does not determine the sufficiency, correctness, authenticity, or validity of any information contained in the notice. Under Section 28, Sufficiency of Notice An initial notice of security interest shall not be rejected if, if it identifies the grantor by an identification number as per the prescribed in the regulation, if it identifies the secured creditor or an agent of the secured creditor by name, if it provides an address for the grantor and secured creditor or its agent, if it describes the collateral and if the prescribed fee has been tendered or an arrangement has been made for payment of fees by the other means. If the registry rejects to register a notice, it shall promptly communicate the fact of and reason for its rejection to the person who submitted the notice. Each grantor must authorize the registration of an initial notice by signing a security agreement or otherwise in writing. A notice may be registered before a security agreement is concluded. Once a security agreement is concluded, the date of registration of the notice shall be reckoned from the date of the notice was registered. A notice of lien may be registered by the lien holder without the consent of the person against whom the lien is sought to be enforced. And lastly, description of the collateral in a notice shall be entered in English. Under Section 29, one notice is sufficient for security interest under multiple security agreements. The registration of a single notice may relate to the security interest created by the grantor under one or more than one security agreement. Under Section 30, states the effectiveness of notice. A notice shall be effective at the time it is discoverable. On the records of the registry, a notice shall be effective for the duration of the term indicated in the notice unless a continuation notice is registered before the term lapses. A notice of substantially complying with the requirements of this chapter shall be effective unless it is seriously misleading. A notice that may not be retrieved in search of the registry against the correct identifier of the grantor shall be ineffective with respect to that grantor. Under Section 31, says the seriously misleading notice. A notice does not provide the identification number of the grantor shall be seriously misleading. Section 44 states when registration and search constitute interference with privacy of an individual. A person who submitted notice for registration or carried out a search of registry with a previous malicious or criminal purpose or intent shall be subject to civil and criminal penalties according to the relevant laws. Section 36. Search of registry records and certified report. The registry shall communicate the following information to any person who requests it. Whether there are in the registry any unlapsed notices that indicates the grantor's identification number or vehicle serial number that exactly matches the relevant criterion provided by the searcher. The registration number and the date and time of registration of each notices and all of the information contained in each notices. If requested, the registry shall issue a certified report of the results of a search that is an official record of the registry and shall be admissible into evidence in judicial proceedings without extrinsic evidence of its authenticity. Section 32. Amendment of Notice a notice may be amended by the registration of an amendment notice that identifies the initial notice by its registration number and provides a new information. An amendment notice that adds collateral that is not proceeds must be authorized by the grantor in writing.
An amendment notice that adds a grantor must be authorized by the added grantor in writing. An amendment notice shall be effective only as to each secured creditor who authorized it. An amendment notice that adds collateral or a grantor shall be effective as to the added collateral or grantor from the date of its registration. Under Section 33 is the continuation of notice. The period of effectiveness of a notice may be continued by registering an amendment notice that identifies the initial notice by its registration number. Continuation of the notice may be registered only within six months before the expiration of the effective period of notice. Section 34 speaks of termination of effectiveness of a notice. The effectiveness of a notice may be terminated by registering a termination notice that identifies the initial notice by its registration number and identifies each secured creditor who authorizes the registration of the termination notice. A termination notice terminates effectiveness of the notice as to each authorizing secured creditor. Section 38. When the grantor may demand amendment or termination of notice, a grantor may give a written demand to a secured creditor to amend or terminate the effectiveness of this notice if all the obligation under the security agreement to which the registration relates have been performed and there is no commitment to make future advances. The secured creditor has agreed to release part of the collateral described in the notice. The collateral described in the notice includes an item or a kind of property that is not a collateral under security agreement between the secured creditor and the grantor. The security agreement exists between the parties and last, security interest is extinguished in accordance with this act. Under section 40 are the matters that may require by demand. Upon the receipt of the demand submitted under section 39, the secured creditor must register within 15 working days an amendment or termination of notice. Terminating the registration in the case with subsections A, D, and E of section 39, amending the registration to release some property that is no longer collateral in a case within subsection C of section 39 or that was never a collateral under a security agreement between secured creditor and the grantor in a case within subsection C of section 39. Section 41. Procedure of, for non-compliance with demand. If the secured creditor fails to comply with the demand within 15 working days after its receipt, the person giving the demand under section 39 may ask the proper court to issue an order terminating or amending the notice as appropriate. Section 42. Compulsory amendments or termination of by court order. The court may, on application by the grantor, issue an order that the notice be terminated or amended in accordance with the demand, which order shall be conclusive and binding on the LRA, provided that the secured creditor who disagrees with the order of the court may appeal the order. The court may make any other order it deems proper for the purpose of giving effect to an order under subsection A of this section. The LRA shall amend or terminate a notice in accordance with the court order made under subsection A of this section as soon as reasonably practicable after receiving the order. Section 43. No fee for compliance of demand. A secured creditor shall not charge any fee for compliance within a demand received under Section 39. Priority of security interest. Section 17. The priority rules. The priority of security interest and liens in the same collateral shall be determined according to the time of the registration of notice or the perfection by other means without regard to the order of creation of the security interest in liens. Section 18. Priority for perfection by control. A security interest in a deposit account with respect with the secured creditor is a deposit taking institution or the intermediary shall have priority over competing security interests perfected by any method. A security interest in a deposit account or investment property that is perfected by control agreement shall have priority over competing security interests except a security interest of a deposit taking institution or the intermediary. The order priority among competing security interest in a deposit account or investment property that were perfected by the conclusion of control agreements shall be determined on the basis of the time of conclusion of the control agreements. Any right to set off the deposit taking institution may have against a grantor's right to payment of funds credit to a deposit account shall have priority over security interest in a deposit account. A security interest in a security certificate perfected by the secured creditor's possession of the certificate shall have priority over a competing security interest perfected by a registration of a notice in the registry. A security interest in electronic security Securities not held within an intermediary perfected by a notation of the security interest in the books maintained for the purpose by or on behalf of the issuer shall have priority over a security interest in the same securities perfected by any other methods. A security interest in electronic securities not held within an intermediary perfected by the conclusion of a control agreement shall have priority over a security interest in the same securities perfected by a registration of notice in the registry. The order priority among competing in security interests in electronic securities not held within an intermediary perfected 
affected by the conclusion of control agreements is determined on the basis of the time of conclusion of the control agreements. Section 19. Priority for instruments and negotiable documents. A security interest in an instrument or negotiable document that is perfected by possession of the instrument or the negotiable document shall have priority over security interest in the instrument of negotiable document that is perfected by registration of a notice of registry. Section 20. Priority in flight of retention by operation of law. A person who provides services or materials with respect to the goods in the ordinary course of business and retains possession of the goods shall have priority over perfected security interest in the goods until payment thereof. Section 21. Transferee exceptions. Any party who obtains in the ordinary course of business, any movable party containing a security interest shall take the same free of such interest provided he was in good faith. No such good faith shall exist if the security interest in the movable property was registered prior to his obtaining the property. Section 22. Effects of the grantor's insolvency of the priority of security interest. Subject to applicability insolvency law, a security interest perfected prior to the commencement of insolvency proceedings in respect of the grantor shall remain perfected and retain the priority it had before the commencement of the insolvency proceedings. Under the definition of terms, purchase money, security interest, is a security interest in goods taken by the seller to secure the price or by a person who gives value to enable the grantor to acquire the goods to the extent that the credit is used for that purpose. Section 23, Purchase Money Security Interest. A purchase money security interest in equipment and its proceeds shall have priority over a conflicting service security interest. If a notice relating to the purchase money, security interest is registered within three business days after the grantor receives possession of the equipment. A purchase money security interest in consumer goods that is perfected by registration of notice not later than three business days after the grantor obtains possession of the consumer goods shall have priority over conflicting security interest. A purchase money security interest in inventory, intellectual property, or livestock shall have priority over a conflicting perfected security interest in the same inventory, intellectual property, or livestock if the purchase money security interest is perfected when the grantor receives possession of the inventory of livestock or acquires the right to the intellectual property and for the grantor receives possession of the inventory or livestock or acquires right in intellectual property, the purchase money secured creditor gives written notification to the holder of the conflicting perfected security interest in the same types of inventory, livestock, or intellectual property. The notification sent to the holder of the conflicting security interest may cover multiple transactions between the purchase money secured creditor and the grantor without the need to identify each transaction. The purchase money security interest in an equipment or consumer goods perfected timely in accordance with subsection A and B shall have priority priority over the rights of a buyer, lessee, or lien holder which arises between delivery of the equipment or consumer goods to the grantor and a time of notice is registered. Under Section 24 is livestock. A perfected security interest in livestock securing an obligation incurred to enable the grantor to obtain food or medicine for livestock shall have priority over any other security interest in the livestock except for perfected purchase money security interest in the livestock. If secured creditor providing credit for the food and medicine given written notice to the holder of the conflicting perfected security interest in the same livestock before the grantor receives possession of the food or medicine. Enforcement of security interest. Under Section 47, expedited the possession of the collateral. The secured creditor may take possession of the collateral without judicial process if the security agreement to so stipulates, provided that possession can be taken without a breach of peace. If the collateral is a fixture, the secured creditor, if has priority over all owners and mortgages, may remove the fixture from the real property to which it is affixed without judicial process. The secured creditor shall exercise due care in removing the fixture. If upon default, the secured creditor cannot take possession of the collateral, without breach of peace, the secured creditor may proceed as follows. A secured creditor shall be entitled to an expedite hearing upon application for an order granting the secured creditor possession of the collateral. Such application shall include a statement by the secured creditor under oath verifying the existence of the security agreement attached to the application and identifying at least one event of default by the debtor under the security agreement. The secured creditor shall provide the debtor grantor and if collateral is fixture and real estate mortgage a copy of the application including all supporting documents and evidence for the order granting the secured creditor possession of the collateral. And the secured creditor is entitled to an order granting possession of the collateral upon the court finding that the default has occurred under the security agreement and the secured creditor has a right to take possession of the collateral. The court may direct the grantor to take such action as the court deems necessary and appropriate so that the secured creditor may take possession of the collateral, provided that the breach of peace shall include entering the private residence of the grantor without permission, resorting to physical violence or intimidation, 
or being accompanied by a law enforcement officer when taking possession or confronting of the grantor. Section 63, Rules on Enforcement Procedure. Under subject to Section 47, the expedited hearing proceedings shall be conducted in summary manner consistent with the declared policies of this Act and in accordance with the rules of procedure of the Supreme Court paper on the gate. Section 46, Right of a higher ranking secured creditor to take over enforcement. Even if another secured creditor or a lien holder has commenced enforcement, a secured creditor whose security interest has priority over that of enforcing secured creditor or lien holder shall be entitled to take over the enforcement process. The right referred to in subsection A of this section may invoke at any time before the collateral is sold or otherwise disposed of or retained by the secured creditor or until the conclusion of agreement by the secured creditor for that purpose. The right of a higher ranking secured creditor to take over the enforcement procedures shall include the right to enforce the rights by any method available to a secured creditor under this act. Recovery in special cases. Upon default, the secured creditor may, without judicial process, instruct the account debtor to make payment to secured secured creditor and apply such payment to the satisfaction of the obligation secured by security interest after deducting the secured creditor's reasonable collection expense. On request of the account debtor, the secured creditor shall provide evidence of its security interest to the account debtor when it delivers the instruction to the account debtor. In a negotiable document that is perfected by possession, proceeds as to a negotiable document or goods covered by the negotiable document. In a deposit account maintained by the secured creditor, apply the balance of the deposit account to the obligation secured by the deposit account. And in other cases of security interest in the deposit account perfected by control, instruct the deposit-taking institution to pay the balance of the deposit account to the secure creditor's account, right to dispose of the collateral under Section 49. After default, a secure creditor may sell or otherwise dispose of the collateral publicly or privately in its present condition or following any commercially reasonable preparation or processing. The secured creditor may buy the collateral at any public disposition or the private disposition but only if the collateral is a kind that is customarily sold on the recognized market or subject of widely distributed standard price quotations. Section 15. Commercial reasonableness required. In disposing of a collateral, the secured creditor shall act in a commercially reasonable manner. A disposition is a commercially reasonable if the serene creditor disposed of the collateral in a conformity with the commercial practices among dealers in the type of the property, a disposition in a commercially unreasonable merely because of a better price could have been obtained by disposition at a different time or by a different method from the time and the method selected by the secured creditor, if a method of disposition of collateral has been approved in any legal proceeding, it is conclusively commercially reasonable. Section 51 Notification of Disposition no later than 10 days before disposition of the collateral, the creditor shall notify the grantor. Any other secured creditor or lien holder within 5 days before the date of notification is sent to the grantor held the security interest or lien in the collateral that was perfected by registration and any other person whom the secured creditor received notification of claim of an interest in the collateral if the notification was received before the secured creditor gave notification of the proposed disposition of the grantor. The grantor may waive his right to be notified. A notification of disposition is sufficient if it identifies the grantor and secured creditor, describes the collateral, states the method of intended disposition, and states the time and place of a public disposition, or the time after which other disposition is to be made. The requirement to send a notification under this section shall not apply if the collateral is perishable or threatens to decline speedily in a value or of a type customarily sold on the recognized market. Under Section 45 is the right of redemption. Any person who is entitled to receive a notification of the disposition in accordance with this chapter is entitled to redeem the collateral by paying or otherwise performing the secured obligation in full, including reasonable cost of enforcement. The right of redemption may be exercised unless the person entitled to redeem has not, after the default, waive in writing the right to redeem. The collateral is sold or otherwise disposed of, acquired or collected by the secured creditor until the conclusion of an agreement by the secured creditor for that purpose and the secured creditor has retained the collateral. Section 52. Application of Proceeds The proceeds of this position shall be applied to the following order. The reasonable expenses of taking, holding, preparing for this position, and disposing of the collateral including reasonable attorney's fees and legal expense incurred by the secured creditor. The satisfaction of the obligation secured by the security interest of the enforcing secured creditor and the satisfaction of obligation secured by any subordinate security interest or lien in the collateral if a written demand and proof of the interest are received before distribution of the proceeds is completed. The secured creditor shall account to the grantor for any surplus 
and unless otherwise agreed, the debtor is liable for any deficiency. Under Section 53 is the rights of the buyer and other third parties. If a secured creditor sells the collateral under this chapter, the buyer shall acquire the grantor's right in the asset free of the rights of any secured creditor or lien holder. If a secured creditor leases or licenses the collateral under this chapter, the lease or licensee shall be entitled to the benefit of a lease or license during its term. If a secured creditor sells, leases, or licenses the collateral not in compliance with this chapter, the buyer, lease, or licensee of the collateral shall acquire the rights or benefits described in subsections A and B of this section, provided that it had no knowledge of the violation of this chapter that materially prejudiced the rights of the grantor of another person. Under section 54 is the retention of collateral by the secured creditor. After a default, a secured creditor may propose to the debtor and a grantor to take all or part of the collateral in a total or partial satisfaction of the secured obligation and shall send a proposal to the debtor and the grantor any other secured creditor or lien who, five days before the proposal is sent to the debtor and the grantor, perfected its security interest or lien by registration, and any other person with an interest in the collateral who has given a written notification to the secured creditor before the proposal is sent to the debtor and grantor. The secured creditor may retain the collateral in the case of a proposal for acquisition of the collateral and full satisfaction of secured obligation unless the secured creditor receives an objection in writing from any person entitled to receive such a proposal within 20 days after the proposal is sent to the person or a proposal for acquisition of the collateral in partial satisfaction of secured obligation only if the secured creditor receives the affirmative consent of each addressee of the proposal in writing within 20 days after the proposal is sent to that person. Transitional provisions under section 55 to 59. Section 55. Interpretation of transitional provisions for this chapter unless the context otherwise requires. Existing secured creditor means a secured creditor with a prior security interest. Prior law means any law that existed or enforced before the effectivity of this act. Prior interest means a security interest created or provided by an agreement or other transaction that was made or entered into before the effectivity of this act and that had not been terminated before the effectivity of this act but exclude the security interest that is renewed or extended by security agreement or other transaction made or entered into on or after the effectivity of this act. Transitional period means the period from the date of effectivity of this act until the date when the registry has been established and operational. Section 56. Creation of prior interest. Creation of prior interest shall be determined by prior laws. A prior interest remains effective between the parties notwithstanding its creation did not comply with the creation requirement of this act. Section 57. Perfection of prior interest. A prior interest was perfected under prior laws continues to be perfected under this act until the earlier of the time the prior interest would cease to be perfected under this prior law and the expiration of transitional period if the perfection requirement of this act are satisfied before the perfection of a prior interest ceases in accordance with subsection A of this section, the prior interest continues to be perfected under this act from the time when it has been perfected under the prior law. If the perfection requirement of this act are not satisfied before the perfection of prior interest ceases in accordance with subsection A of this section, the prior interest is perfected only from the time it is perfected under this act. A written agreement between a grantor and a secured creditor creating a prior interest is sufficient to constitute authorization by the grantor of the registration of a notice covering assets described in the agreement under this act. If a prior interest referred to in the subsection B of this section was perfected by, by the registration of a notice under prior law, Law, the time of alliteration under the prior law shall be the time to be used for the purpose of applying the priority rules of this act. Section 58. Priority of prior interest. The priority of prior interest as against the rights of the competing claimant is determined by the prior law. The security and the rights of competing claimant arose before the activity of this act. The priority status of these rights has not changed since the effectivity of this act. For the purpose of subsection A2 of this subsection, the priority status of prior interest has changed only if it was perfected when this act took effect but ceases to be perfected or it was not perfected under prior law when this act took effect and was only perfected under this act. Section 59 is the enforcement of prior interest. If any step or action has been taken to enforce a prior interest before the effectivity of this act, enforcement may continue under prior law or may proceed under this act. Subject to subsection A of this section, prior law shall apply to a matter that is subject of proceedings before a court before the effectivity of this act.